as I said, we have a microphone at the front there. If you'd like to ask your question to Lee, go right ahead and we can uh, commence with asking the questions. Don't be afraid. Straight away, this gentleman here. Hello, Lee. Um, I've heard this will be a new six million dollar man film. If so, will you be in it at all? I read somewhere. Hi everybody, hello, how are you? It's great to be here, even though it's a little cold outside. <laughs> uh, the new six million dollar man you're asking about, which will now be the six billion dollar man. I feel like I'm being shortchanged on that deal. Uh, yeah, well, Mark Wahlberg is going to be doing Steve Austin, and uh, they'll start shooting in 2016 and will probably be out 2017. But they haven't finished a script yet. Don't ask me if I'm going to be in it because I have no idea. <laughs> Where we got next? Uh, this gentleman here. If you'd like to make a cue behind them, please feel free. Sure, just line up up there and get your questions in if you like. We'll do the best we can to answer them. Hi, Lee. Thank you. Yeah. My childhood would never be the same. I would never run in slow motion everywhere. <laughs> Probably took you a long time. <laughs> Were you ever injured in any of the stunts that occurred? And can you remember an event that uh, well, was that's recounting? A, I had my nose broken twice, <laughs> uh, both by horses. I was, uh, I was supposed to have been shot and I had the saddlebags uh, that, that I was throwing over the horse's head before I climbed up, slung up over that horse, and, and the saddlebags, which were across his neck, slid off the other side and caught on the reins, which made him throw his head back and hit me right in the nose as I was leaning over him, having been shot. The last thing I remember was um, kind of guiding the horse off stage enough so that we got out of the camera and then I remember sliding to the ground. Uh, there was another time which uh, I'm on a horse uh, with Linda Evans uh, on the other side and of course they had a stunt girl in for her because this old, I see the glint of the rifle up in the woods and uh, so I take a leap and from my horse over her horse, take uh, Linda's stunt double off to the ground. We roll down a bank and, and at the end we stop and they come and they start to shoot those close-ups. And so I'm hovering over Linda and uh, no one tells me the director's going to fire a gun uh, off camera right behind me as uh, we start filming. And naturally, she jerks her head up, and I go down to cover her, and she breaks my nose again. The last thing I remember on that one is, let's hurry and get as close up before it swells. <laughs> so they have no pity on you. Yes, there are many injuries when you do stunts. I've been my 50, almost 53rd year, starting with way back in the 60s with westerns and of course, when you're doing a lot of cowboy stuff and a lot of saloon fights, sometimes a man is supposed to throw a right at you and ends up throwing a lift, and you kind of going the wrong way there. So it's, it's got to remember your P's and Q's. That's why they rehearse these things for many hours, so that they get them right and nobody gets hurt. But things happen, and you get bruises along the way, but luckily nothing ever really broken. I wish now that I had used my stuntman more, Especially on all those running things I had to do on the six million dollar man and running and jumping off of buildings and stuff because I think I need to have new two new bionic knees. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lee. Uh, just want to say my middle name is Lee because my father was a great fan of the Big Valley. And that's going back a little while. Um, you are an inspiration and you're the first and only man ever got me into carrying a doll. Uh, this doll had a hole in the back of its head and I had to look through it because it was the first six million dollar man doll that came out in the UK. Do you remember that doll? 
Yeah, the one with the hole in the head. <laughs> Uh, you're a legend and you are a role model and I think you need to, to be applauded by the crowd here because you actually were the world's first mass production superhero. So give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, the reason why I'm creeping, Lee, I'd like a, a photo with you later on, so I'm just spreading you up from now. <laughs> but thank this you is, very, very really, much. This is really my PR man. <laughs> <laughs> this is your legend and thank you. Kind of words to hear. Hey, little man. Hi, Ellie. Um... <laughs> uh, so my mum says that you were a really like cool person, and that you are a really cool person. That she liked you quite a lot. So could you just say hi to her, please? Her name's Samantha. He said he. He said that um, when he was, you, well, he's obviously, his mother uh, is a very big fan of yours, and she says you're a really cool person, um, I, and he was wondering if you could say hi to Samantha. Um, now, if, if I do that, is that going to get you some points? <laughs> or a date or something? Hi, Samantha. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> She's looking very happy. All right. He, he's going to get some rewards. <laughs> and the gentleman mentioned uh, Lee, the six million dollar man action figure and things like that. What was it like for you when you got to see yourself in the film? Obviously, but what was it like to be in one of the first TV shows really to have that kind of presence on the toy market? Well, you know, I thought it was kind of silly uh, when I first saw it. Uh, but uh, And little did I know that people would even buy so, such a thing. But you never knew, when, when I was working, especially on the Six Million Dollar Man, I, I was working, we were doing 39 shows a season, which took up a lot of time. So you never had any spare time to, to travel or, or even make any films because um, you kind of rested up to get ready for the next batch, for the next season. So you didn't really know how, how shows were doing. You know, they say, oh, well, it's in the top ten in the ratings, but you don't know what that means. At least I didn't back then. And uh, you didn't know that there was millions and millions of people watching this all over the world. I didn't even know it went out of the country. I, I didn't know it was outside the United States until, you know, I started traveling around years later, and there, were, there would be, uh, people would really know you everywhere. And any time you'd walk into a restaurant, uh, they would be going. Just one of the waiters. It's quite interesting. And then uh, be in a small, small country, and they would come and say, "We didn't have but one TV in the village," and we would go down on Friday nights, gather around the one TV to watch your show. So well, after hearing these stories all over, uh, it, it became known that it was quite a big show. And even the Big Valley was quite quite large in the 60s. I did three other series in the 60s with uh, uh, the last year of the Virginian, uh, an Owen, uh, a lawyer series called Owen Marshall Counsel at Law for three years, and then I went into Six Mill. After six well, uh, I thought maybe I'd take a break, but then they asked me to do another show called The Fall Guy. When I, I decided to do The Fall Guy, only because I thought, well, maybe I could get rid of being typecast as Steve Austin. And so Cold Seavers took over for a little while, for five years, but it didn't seem to cover up the fact that Steve Austin was still going to be there forever, because it obviously was even more watched than the fall guy so uh, anyway i've been very grateful i, I, I did uh, uh, probably a total of seven or eight series i even did one here in england uh in in london to the bbc called too much sun and uh, i never could figure it out because it took place in southern california uh, that's why it was called too much sun and I shot it here in January and February. There wasn't any sun. And I was freezing my butt off. But, but it was quite an experience to be able to work in London and, and, and absorb your culture and all the many fine qualities of the city. Yes? 
Hi, Lee. Um, as a professional actor, um, what did your parents think when you told them that you were going to be an actor? And if you couldn't have been an actor, what job would you have done? No, and acting was never in my uh, in my sights, nor it was in my my parents' sights. Um, I, I was an athlete. I played uh, sports well enough. Played high school football, basketball, baseball, track. Uh, got a football scholarship uh, in the United States and went to college. Played football, and I I uh, had a back injury when I was a junior in college, which put me out for a year. And then on a dare, I went out for a, a, a play about my teammates. They dared me to go out for this part. So I said, okay, I'll go out and uh, audition. And then I ended up getting the part. And then I realized, heck, I got to do the damn thing, which was um, a little frightening. But that was my first taste of acting. Uh, and then, because uh, I really would have probably been uh, teaching and coaching football, which was the love of my life. Uh, obviously, the first Bionic series, followed by Lindsay Wagner with Bionic Woman. What did you think about the episode when they advertised the Bionic Doll? Keith, it's very hard and difficult with the rumble of noise. Up there. The question was, there was a one episode featuring a bionic dog. What did you think about the inclusion of a bionic dog? Well, yeah, they came to me about saying, we want to put a dog. Um, I said, no way. <laughs> I said, no, you're not going to put a bionic dog in my show. You can put that over on a bionic woman. And she loves dogs. So this Max never got to appear on the Six Million Dollar Man. <laughs> they were always trying to make something bionic. The bionic boy they did. You know, they like to spin things off. It's like when a network finds a hit show, they, uh, it's like instead of giving you one scoop of ice cream, they want to start selling you pints and, and different colors of it. But it's the same ice cream. So it's in the, they spin, we tried to spin the, this, even the bionic woman off again in one of the latter movies that we did after the show was canceled and i remember a young girl that was uh doing the part nobody knew who she was her name is sandra bullock who later become became very big she never hired me in anything after that but, but no they they tried to spin the, that off and you know they bring up anything that was bionic and uh, try to sell it but no no dog Hi, Mr. May, just um, in your very long career. And how is your marriage going? My marriage is just fine, three and a half months. As, as I remember, it's only been a few months. Three and a half, yeah. How many? Three and a half. Three and a half. Glad to see you up and around. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> um, you are a living legend. Um, so what part of your very long career has been, personally for you, your most enjoyable? Uh, what part did I like the best? Yeah. I would say Coke Seavers. Uh, Coke was more to my liking, more to my true personality, which uh, we like to have fun and uh, uh, mischievous. And, but but uh, no, and that was a good good part of my life. I liked that period of my life and uh, I just had a lot of fun with that show. I got to, uh, I could pick the directors that I wanted. I could cast the people that I wanted. So it was, it was very enjoyable. When I did Six Million Dollar Man, I was, I was kind of uh, a slave to uh, Universal Studios because I was under contract to Universal Studios before series for them. So, yeah, Coke Sleepers is people when Right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Lee. Um, I'm sure you've been asked this a number of times, but if you could choose any part of you to be bionic, what would it be and why? 
That's a very personal question. <laughs> Probably at my age, I think I'd like to have both legs bionic uh, after so many years of running and doing 85% of my stunts. I wish I'd use my stuntman more, but uh, my knees are getting uh, to where they could be almost replaceable. So I think that would be it. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Majors. Thank you for being here. Uh, you're certainly everybody's hero, as well as mine. Um, when you was doing The Six Million Dollar Man, or just afterwards, you did a film called Steel. And I thought, I was hoping that would be the start of a film career. But alas, that didn't quite happen, but I really enjoyed that film. Did you think that you'd be making more films after The Six Million Dollar Man finished, or would you hope that you had done that? Mm. Well, um, you know, when I finished uh, Big Valley, uh, I, I, there was periods of time when I was able to work in some films. I, I, my first film uh, that I got credit introducing me was a, a wonderful movie called Will Penny with Charlton Heston. It was probably one of the best performances Mr. Heston ever did. It was a wonderful Western. Uh, and if you ever get a chance to see it, it's, it's just uh, a true, true, it's true to the form. Good Western. Um, I did, um, I did William Wyler's wonderful famous director, his last film called The Liberation of L.B. Jones, Lee J. Cobb, and um, a bunch of wonderful actors in that. But, um, I did selective films throughout, but when you do, when you do 40, 40 uh, shows uh, uh, for a series, you're working almost the entire year. You may get off a little bit at uh, Christmas and, uh, and at Thanksgiving and some of those times, but you just don't have time to make films. So it was either kind of one or the other, and since one was feeding me and the other one I didn't know yet, so uh, you had to stay with, dance with what brung you. So to speak, but uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't regret not having done as many. Uh, I'm still working though now. I'm doing a lot more. Uh, uh, kind of we call them low-budget films, which uh, are very good. That they're, they're good scripts and, and good cast uh, nowadays with all the franchise movies. They're so big, and uh, and they, they keep using the same people over and over again. You know, the same actors are in Furious 1 and they're in Furious 18, or whatever number they're up to. So it's, uh, uh, plus I, I, I don't enjoy the big franchise blockbusters as much as just seeing a good down-home movie anymore. But they just don't make that many anymore. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's really good to see you in the rebooted Dallas as well. That's obviously uh, been a big success. Yeah, well, uh, Dallas is, uh, I did that for my friend, Larry Hagman. And, uh, while it was in process of me being, getting ready to do the part, he passed away. Unfortunately, we never got to work together at that last time, but uh, he was responsible for putting me in there at that time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if many of you have seen it, but uh, let me recommend one film for you before I go. It came out just recently on DVD and pay-per-view, uh, but it's called Do You Believe? Do You Believe is a wonderful faith-based film, but it's not like a faith-based film that you would know. It's not, it's not, and it doesn't hit you over the head with religion, but it's a, it's a story of 12 people who uh, are going different ways, 
they all have their problems, and it all ends up one night in Chicago on a bridge. Uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, Myra Sorvino, Sybil Shepherd, Sean Astin. Uh, I hope, I think that if you will see that movie, you will be very moved by it. So, do you believe? Check it out. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Lee. First of all, I want to uh, I want to tell you that I absolutely agree with you that uh, it seems to be the same movie made over and over again. Uh, essentially, uh, you could you couldn't tell the script from uh, from Furious One uh, to to Furious Seven, in my opinion. But uh, what I want to ask you is, um, do you think uh, you mentioned that uh, you wish you would have done uh, less of your stunts? But uh, do you think you would have had the same career if you had? I don't know. I, I often, I'll, I'll give you a quick story about doing, when I was just finishing up the Big Valley, uh, ABC had canceled Big Valley, and I was, my agent had gotten me this film. I met with the director, the producer, the writer, and we were, they were negotiating on whether uh, we wanted to do a three, three picture deal. And uh, we were going to be very close. And, uh, all of a sudden, ABC decided to pick up the series, The Big Valley, for one more year. And they would not let me out to do this film, regardless. And uh, they went to New York and they found a young actor named John Voight. And uh, they went on to make this movie called Midnight Cowboy, which uh, was an Academy Award winning film. Which was right when I was, would have been good as a start. But then I look back over the years, that and John Voight and I are friends. Uh, he has made some wonderful I haven't had the hours in front of a camera as you have. Because when you do a film, you're, 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 it's a couple of hours. You, uh, you do a series for five, say five years, and the most of mine ran five years or more. That's a lot of hours in front of a camera. And if you're an actor, the main thing you want to do is be working and being in front of the camera. So uh, 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 it didn't matter to me. Because personally, well, what I always enjoyed about watching uh, watching the stuff that you watching your work is the fact that you uh, you actually did uh, most of the stunts yourself. That's what always impressed me. Yeah. Well, when, like I said, I was an athlete, and when I came out of, uh, I'd come out of college football, just getting into the, the business, uh, helping me, uh, being able to do stunt work helped me get started also. So I, I, I started doing a lot of stunts, and uh, it just became a natural for me, and became fun to do, because back then, and when you're young, you, you feel in, a little invincible. So. Uh, and it made the day go faster, and it was much, much more fun to do. So I just kept doing them. I wish now I'd use my stuntman more. Thank you very much. We've got time for two more questions. Yep. Hi there, uh, Mr. Majors. Thank you for coming over to England. Um, one thing I was going to ask is, who are the actors that have influenced you in your career? And have draw and have been able to draw from. Uh, I think growing up when I was a little boy, that I watched. You know, the only thing was on was westerns on television, yeah. and probably 20 shows on the air. And so you you were kind of limited. But I, but yeah, I loved Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, Lone Ranger, all those cowboy actors and. When I got up to the point where I could do uh, the Fall Guy and be able to cast and help with those shows, I had a show where I used a lot of those old cowboys 
Roy Rogers came on my show and Trigger and Dale Evans. Uh, we had a great time. Um, as far as in film, it would have been uh, my good friend Steve McQueen and uh, Paul Newman. Those were the two that uh, that I really liked. Uh, anything? One more? Yeah, time for one more. Hi Lee, great to see you today. Thank you. Um, now you've given my wife some uh, ideas of bionic parts that could be useful. Uh, that's very, very good. Uh, but my question to you is that uh, I destroyed my car yesterday and uh, it's a total write-off. Uh, is it good money being a stuntman? Well, I would say you're walking good. I'd say <laughs> You did a good job. <laughs> he walked away from it. All right, I think we're about done here. Uh, I appreciate all you coming out and, and listening to whatever stuff we were saying here. Uh, it's such a pleasure to, to get out to see you people and uh, shake some hands and sign some photos for you. And I think we all should be grateful that we are here today. Uh, I was thinking... I, you know, I, I only started doing a sh few shows a couple years ago in the States, but I've never done one out of the country until today. First one ever. I must say you people have been wonderful. No, you, you've, uh, you've all, the, the, the lines were quiet. People were very nice and gentle, and, and I think they enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, I, I hope that we'll, we'll all thank and say a few prayers for all the people who are having all the problems around the world, especially in France and those countries that are being uh, unsettled by uh, jihadist terrorism today. And let's all fight it, and that's why we're here. So uh, let's, let's uh, hope that, that uh, your, your wonderful country remains safe as ours, and let's fight it together. And thank you for coming out today.